Having done the trial fitment of the Salisbury, I've now got it back out again. The spring, the new spring saddles were tacked in place and now I've welded them. I've run a, a number of lines of weld uh, along every angle to make sure that they're uh, well uh, <laughs> stuck on there. One thing that I've also done, I've just uh, cut away about oh, roughly a centimetre of the bump stop uh, mount because uh, originally this was wider than, than the new mount and the new mount wasn't central to this bump stop mount. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but certainly the leaf springs were fully in place with their poly bushes. There wasn't any left to right free play in them and this was the position that the axle wanted to sit. So I don't see the benefit of putting preload on the springs by welding the new saddles central to this so that I then have to force the springs inwards uh, in order to get the axle to sit on them. I can't see the point because uh, that's going to affect the operation of the suspension and it would significantly reduce the life of the spring bushes. So I felt it was easier just to cut away a section of uh, the spring mount. I've done the same on the other side and I'll tidy that up now and that will allow me to mount the U-clamps nicely central. I've finished tidying up the welds on the new spring saddles as best I can. Uh, I've gone around with a grinder as you can clearly see and uh, tried to create a radius on all of the welds. Yeah so next job uh, is to start doing the work on the differential I think which is to change the pinion oil seal and then to go inside and have a look at the backlash and the engagement pattern on the teeth to make sure that the diff is basically healthy. Now I've got the pan off the back of the diff and I'm going to check a few things before I disturb the main pinion nut to change the oil seal, uh, I want to take a baseline to just to establish uh, whether I've disturbed anything after I finish that job. Now the first thing I want to check is uh, the backlash between the ring gear and the pinion and you do that by uh, setting up your dial gauge the way I've shown here and then you can just very gently move the gear backwards and forwards without moving the pinion itself you're moving it as much as you can without the pinion moving. And you can see that what we're looking at here is 10 thou, and the maximum spec for backlash is uh, 10 thou. The range is 6 to 10 thou. So uh, in view of the fact that this is a used diff, I'm uh, happy enough with that. That's good. So what I've done now is that uh, I've marked up uh, four of the ring gear teeth with the yellow gear marking compound and I've driven the pinion uh, just using uh, a drill at a slowish speed forwards and then backwards and while doing that uh, as per the way that Spicer themselves actually do it uh, well, they have something that looks slightly more professional than this but not very much uh, you actually jam a piece of wood into the frame top or bottom depending on which direction you're moving the uh, ring gear uh, and that provides a bit of uh, load friction uh, not a huge amount of course but it, it, it improves the quality of the mark that gets produced in the die so let's have actually a look at that I'll just have to grab a torch you can see that the pattern are uh, this is the forward driving side uh, of the tooth and you can see that there is a nice oval contact patch pretty much slap bang in the middle uh, of the face of the tooth basically it's pretty central so I'm quite happy with that uh, on the reverse side the picture is the same uh, although of course I'm really not that bothered about the reverse side frankly but uh, if I switch this round to have a look at the reverse side uh, again uh, although the oval shape is spread out over a wider area it still appears to be fairly central uh, on the on the face of the tooth 
So overall, I'm happy with that. It, it appears that pinion and ring gear are good. We already know backlash is, is good at, uh, at 10 thou. So it, it appears that, certainly in this area, the, the diff is good. So now I'm gonna move on to change the oil seal on the pinion. If any of you are wondering where I got the yellow gear marking compound um, from that I was using on the differential, this is from the Ukraine. Um, and I couldn't find anywhere closer to the UK than, than the Ukraine that you could buy this. I got it on eBay. And I, I had been looking for a while to where to get this stuff. And I contacted Dave Ashcroft, in fact, from Ashcroft Transmissions in the UK. And he said, yeah, it's difficult to get hold of. It's by far the best stuff. Uh, Engineers Blue doesn't give... It's much more difficult to see the load pattern using the blue. Uh, with this yellow um, compound, is very much their preferred uh, variant, but they have to get it either from the Ukraine or from the US. It's quite easy to get in the US, I believe. Uh, well, I got it from the Ukraine because that was what was available on eBay UK. That's the first step in... Uh removing the pinion and getting the oil seal changed. I've marked the relationship between the pinion itself, the retaining nut and the flange so that I can put the whole lot back together in line. Uh, the idea being of course that uh, the nut is the most important thing, that the nut goes back in exactly the same place that it came off, uh, which it's hoped will recreate the same amount of preload torque on the bearings. Uh, it, it's not an ideal technique, but it's the best I've got available to me and it seems to be what everyone else does reasonably successfully. So um, yeah, I'll just get on with it. I've been making some uh, dimension comparisons between the old and the new input flange. Uh, I don't particularly want to reuse, oop, oop, oop. I don't particularly want to reuse the old one if I can avoid it because I don't know how well this comes out, but there is some damage on the oil seal surface on, on this flange. And as I previously mentioned, this flange actually has a, you can't really see it just now, but it's actually got, uh, the flange has been bashed in the past and it's, it's warped backwards at one point. So I would prefer to use the new one, uh, but I've taken measurements in the important dimension, which is between that surface there and the underside. And there appears to be a 17 thou difference between these two flanges. And that's going to throw out the whole notion of putting the nut, uh, the, the pinion nut back on and doing it up to the same place. So I think I'm going to have to try to clean up the old flange. So I thought I'd just show you the extent of the damage to this flange that I need to try to correct if I'm going to reuse it. I mean, in theory, actually, I don't really, the, the, because the bend is away from the prop and it's right in between two of the fixing holes, chances are I could bolt the prop onto this and this wouldn't actually have an effect on, on the operation. But I would rather correct it if I can. I've mounted it in the hydraulic press and positioned it so that the press is going to be forcing down on the area that's bent. Uh, I'm trying to resist the force of the hydraulic press using these three clamps. Now that might just not work. Uh, anyway, let's see what happens. It does appear to have applied a bend. It's definitely forcing the rest of the flange up against those uh, clamps which are designed for DIY use. They're not designed for this kind of thing. But the positioning of these uh, blocks means that it has definitely applied a bending force downwards to the damaged area. So I'll release the tension now and we'll see what we've got. I think I've got this about as good as I'm going to get it. Uh, if I carry on, 
I'm just going to end up uh, making matters worse. You, you know how it is. When you get beyond a certain point, it's just uh, not worth interfering anymore. Well, I think uh, I've probably finished refurbing this as much as I'm going to, as much as I need to. Um, I've flatted the flange here first with uh, carefully with a file running across it at multiple angles um, and then with uh, emery paper and oil on a flat steel surface and that looks pretty good and also I'm pretty happy with the seal surface uh, I've ground that down with emery paper first then I've taken the uh, polishing compounds to it with a polishing wheel and uh, that's come up. There are still some traces of the original marks uh, but with that with this amount of polish on there I'm pretty confident that an oil seal is going to do uh, a good job on that. So uh, I can carry on with changing the oil seal and putting this back in. So the next stage is that I've got the oil seal out of the uh, nose of the diff uh, I got that out simply with a big screwdriver, just pushed it in to the seal down the side of the uh, pinion itself and then just levered and it just popped out. Uh, it, it wasn't a particularly heavy interference fit. So it would appear that the, the oil seal is one of the original leather oil seals and the leather I mean it's rock solid so I'm really thinking I'm not going to re I'm not going to use a new leather one I'm, I'm going to go for a for a rubber one it, it's got to be better than this these gaskets are on the diagram as well really couldn't figure out what on earth they were for well now I have figured it out uh, they actually go against the ridge there and the oil seal the oil seal sits against them and I, I realize what that's for it's because you know pretty unusually these days this oil seal both the leather and the rubber version they're, they're entirely encased in metal so it, it's metal to metal when you when you put this in to the diff and I'm guessing that in a lot of instances that actually allows a certain amount of oil to leak out around the side so that's what they uh, got the these uh, ring gaskets for they actually sit into this little groove here and then that gets popped in and, uh, and consequently the gaskets in theory will stop oil being able to get round the outside of the seal uh, to leak out to the outside world. I'll use the gaskets and I'll also put silicon around the outside, um, just uh, belt and braces if you like. Um, okay. I've uh, cleaned the bearing that I can get at, the one you see uh, just pops out, so I've cleaned that down with petrol and put it back in. The condition appears to be okay, the bearings and the bearing race, it, it, it's well worn, but it doesn't appear to have actually gone through the case hardening, which I'm pleased about, because uh, I really don't want to have to fit new bearings into this. Uh, so that's back in, I and I've poured on some of this oil which I'm going to use this is Motul 80W90 it's mineral oil but it, it's fairly good quality mineral oil and it's got an additive in it uh, MOS2 which I guess is molybdenum disulfide so now we put on the oil thrower I'll get on I'll put the the paper gasket around this edge and uh, tap in the new oil seal. I uh, got the new seal in. This is the rubber one as I said I was going to use uh, which looks uh, pretty substantial actually uh, in there. So now I just need to uh, pop in the input flange and hopefully preload the bearings again by torquing down the main pinion nut putting it back in the position it was uh, in before. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. While we're here, I thought I might just show you 
where that um, that oil supply tunnel that goes under the nose of the diff, it actually comes out just there, uh, as I thought, very much uh, in in the oil bath, and uh, you can see it just going up to the front. So it's clear that Spicer were pretty de determined that these pinion bearings were very thoroughly lubricated, and it also highlights again that if you artificially angle these axles nose up to try and improve your prop shaft angle, not only are you liable to cause vibrations for yourself, uh, but you're probably going to end up starving at least the front pinion bearing uh, of oil.